to an independent label. Okay? Independent. That means it ain't no major label. That means that the shit that y'all be seeing me doing is happening because I am an independent bitch that do independent shit. I wake up and I say, hey, I want to do this today. Hey, I want to do this today. Hey, I want to drop this today. And usually, I can do that. So all that, all these them covers and them motherfucking charts and all that shit, that ain't because I had no help. That ain't from no push. That ain't from no money. All that radio, I be doing all the performances I'm supposed to do. I be motherfucking doing everything that I do because I want to do it because I'm independent. I signed to an independent label. Okay? So I just want y'all to keep up with that. Keep up with that. Independent. Nobody helping. The label, the first label that I'm signed to, both my labels is independent labels. Y'all on there? Y'all with me? Independent. Ain't nothing. All that, that big label shit, all that shit you see them artists doing, I'm right there rolling with them. But I'm on an independent label. But I got all the freedom to do what I be wanting to do. All right? Now, let's talk about where it started going wrong. No, Rock Nation is my management. I'm not signed to Rock Nation as a label. So, I'll just one more time because I see some new people asking new questions. I'm signed to two independent labels. And I do what I want to do. They following the Megan Thee Stallion train. Me... And my mama built that shit from the ground up. I was doing ciphers. This earring just don't want to be on. I was doing ciphers. I was freestyling in front of the car, in front of my house. I was rapping in front of anybody who was going to listen to me rap. Okay? I was just rapping because I like to rap. Rapping because I want to rap. That's what I like to do. I ain't wake up one day and be like, I'm a rapper. No, I've been rapping for a long time. Been want to be a rapper. This is my passion. I feel very strongly about it. So, me and my mama, my mama used to answer all my emails. My mama was my manager. My mama was my rock. My mama was everything. It was just me and my mama rolling around this hoe. Doing Megan the Stallion shit. So then, we met T. Ferris. And T. Ferris was like, okay, I, I have this label and I really want you to sign to it. It's an independent label we just starting up. Me and my mama love T. Ferris. Boom. Signed to 1501. Signed to 1501. Now, 1501 had a bunch of artists. A bunch of niggas on the label. What? 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 Come here! Was that too, is that too crazy? Baby, I can't even see that through that window. Do you know I should... Sorry, y'all. Yeah, Girl, what's that for? <laughs> Girl, go on now. <laughs> so, anyway. <laughs> okay, so, so what I'm doing is... Um, get out, get out. Get out. What's that? No, because what... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, he want to be all in my combo. So, anyways, so boom, signed fifteen on one, fifteen on one, very new, fifteen on one. Got niggas on the label already. They they been 
They been had that. But when I got on the label, now, you know, now I'm a part of the label. So, they didn't have nobody. That was really like, you know, on a large scale yet. So, my mama was managing me. We was doing our own thing. We was doing our own thing. So, I started getting more popping, more popping. And then I signed with 300. That's another independent label. Okay? It's my second independent label. So, when I signed with 300, everybody's still a big happy family. Everybody happy. Everybody good. Oh, shit. Oh shit, what they said about my mama? Y'all asking dumb shit under here. So anyways, so it's really cold in New York. But anyway, so I signed with 300 because even though 300 is a, a, a independent label, it's still a bigger label. Like in my head, it's like, okay, they're going to be able to put my music in more places like because I was still uploading shit like CD baby even when I was on 1501 so I mean I'm still on 1501 but even when I first started on 1501 I was still putting shit out through like little bitty ass distributors so when I got with 300 it just happened to go to like a bigger scale so point blank period now on this day I want to tell y'all that 1501 trying to tell me I can't put out no music You know, one don't want me to put out no music and I've been seeing a lot of little shit on the internet motherfuckers be talking shit and it's real crazy because all I did was ask to renegotiate my contract then it became a big old thing when I signed I didn't really know what was in my contract I was young. I think I was like 20. And I didn't know everything that was in that contract. So when I got with Rock Nation, I got management, real management. I got real lawyers. And they was like, do you know that this is in your contract? And I was like, oh, damn, that's crazy. No, I didn't know. So I'm not mad at 1501. I wasn't upset because... I'm thinking in my head, oh, well, everybody cool. We all family. It's cool. It's nice. Let me just ask some niggas to renegotiate my contract. <laughs> Soon as I said, I want to renegotiate my contract, everything went left. Like, it just all went bad. It all went left. So now they're telling the bitch that the, she can't drop no music. It's really just like a greedy game. Like, it's really just real greedy. Wasn't trying to leave the label. Wasn't trying to not give nobody money that they feel like they entitled to. I just want to renegotiate some shit. I'm not a greedy person. I'm not a person that like confrontation. I'm not a person that's a bitch. Like, I work with everybody and I'm nice. And I'm real family oriented. But niggas gonna be niggas. And they gonna be greedy and they gonna be shady. And I see the shit that people be, that, you know, that can't be saying about me. And I'll be like, damn, well, since you got so much to say, why you just won't tell them why you mad? You mad because I don't, because I don't 
want to roll over and bow down like a little bitch and you don't want to renegotiate my contract. <laughs> Niggas be like, oh, yeah, they made Megan Thee Stallion. Megan Thee Stallion was Megan Thee Stallion before I even got over there. I've been rapping, been freestyling, been doing me, been, been made. So who the fuck, how the fuck can y'all say a nigga made me? Niggas don't even care about what's right. They care about money in the end. And it's just a, it's a greedy game, man. So y'all don't see no music from Megan Thee Stallion. It's because. 1501 don't want to drop that music what's up everybody welcome back to street kings pr podcast my name is devin brown street kings promotions and sme we're music industry service providers we're here to assist serious independent artists who want to properly align themselves in the digital era of music uh as always i appreciate everybody that's been tuning in to the podcast um i appreciate everybody that's subscribing to the zamunda land music money and entertainment channel um, basically, we, sh we post short clips, uh, celebrity clips, um, just things that's happening in, in, in music industry and in Hollywood. We just want to post content, man. So we appreciate people who are coming in and, and they enjoy clips that we share. But we also cater and service uh, independent artists out there who are looking to properly align themselves um, in the digital era of music. So uh, I'll leave all my links in the description box. If you guys are looking to properly align your brands, I, I would love the opportunity to speak with you guys. Um, today's video, man, I I've been doing these short videos uh, on major artists who coming out um, talking about, you know, how they're not getting paid. And I just use these videos to kind of like educate uh, artists out there so you guys don't follow or find yourself in the same uh, situations. Um, but Megan Thee Stallion has been pre pretty vocal about her contract and um how she was unhappy with her contract and i think like i've been doing some research i think she's restructured her contract with 1501 she's still signed to 1501 so a lot of people came in my inbox when i did initially did the first video uh about making a stay well i don't think i, I just kind of spoke about it on my facebook page you know and, I, and her fan base kind of came for me you know you know i do understand like i said i understand people willing to you know they go they're willing to go to war behind their favorite artists you know so but the thing is like just listening to her video in the video she's saying how she's an independent artist you know make, making a stand, uh signed to uh, two independent labels uh 1501 and to 300 entertainment and uh in this visual she kind of go through the story tell you how you know she, she made it to 1501. She ended up being signed to 1501. And, you know, a lot of the things that she's saying in the video, as far as um, she's saying how she's competing with um, the major artists, you know, if you're competing with major artists, then there's a major bag behind you. So I don't know if she was aware that the label was putting money behind her. Nobody got to tell me this. Uh, the uh, 1501 was putting money behind her because believe me, the major brands that she's uh, affiliated with right now, that they know like somebody had to put uh, some major money behind you in order for you to show up on the platforms that, you know, we, we saw her on. Um, so she she's saying in the video how every independent artist who aspires to be in this industry, you know, they they working hard. They doing ciphers, they doing challenges. Uh, they paying to open up for uh, some of their favorite artists, you know. And uh, those are bucket list things. Those are things that you definitely got to do and you want to do in order to put you and your brand, your products, you know, in front of people. Um, so she said she was doing that. You know, she said she was doing that. Her mom, her and her mom were doing their thing. And she was doing ciphers and doing different things to, 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 to show anything she could to basically you know, find somebody who's willing to invest in her talent. But she's saying how her mother was handling uh, most of the business stuff, you know? So in this, in, in, in this, in this industry, like, you know, when it's all said and done, I just feel like she gonna lose, you know, she gonna lose, you know, she signed a contract. She signed a contract and you being 18 years old and, and, and unaware 
And she even said in this contract, like she never read a contract. She really never knew what was in her contract. But she really signed up actually a good deal. 60-40 on the front end with labels. Of course, the labels investing the money, they take the 60, she getting 40. But on the publishing, as far as our masters, they uh, you know, uh fifteen on one was giving up they give she got a fifty fifty deal, fifty fifty splits with our, uh as far as our masters. But she signed a three sixty though. So just like the majors, even though she signed to an independent artist, uh, not only are they gonna take, you know, money off the uh, you know, they're gonna do their front end split and their publishing split, but they will also want, you know, they want a piece of the merch, piece of the show money, endorsements that come in, you know. That label is gonna try to maximize and, and get as much you know money out of this product, you know, to, to, to get a return on that investment. So in the video what she's saying, she y'all see me running neck and neck uh with these major artists that ain't come from no push, that ain't come from now I'm doing these radio interviews. Uh if you're on the radio, if you're on the radio with the major artists, it's a major bag behind you. Well where she's aware of that. Or not, and I'm pretty sure she'll find out things once she go to court. And I saw a video where she was saying like he even uh, he even put um, he even put uh, her chain, the label chain on us uh, like an expense report when her attorney's asking you know I guess him for a list of the things he's paid for you know when you know man it costs money to develop an artist it costs money for artists to be on different platforms it costs money to be on the radio, you know? So running neck and neck with a major artist has a major bag behind you, you best believe that. So, you know, and I talk to artists about this all the time, man, you know, you guys gotta start reading and researching things. Um, you don't have to go down the road that a lot of these artists are going down, you know? As an independent artist, yes, it's a long, hard road. It's a lot of hard work, but you can attain a lot of the things that you see these artists, these major artists attain you know, it's just all about how you set up in the system and how you uh, advertising it, you know, your marketing dollars. But, you know, you, you got to keep that leverage, man, or you're going to be making these type of videos. Uh, y'all leave me a comment. Y'all let me know what y'all think. You know, like I say, these are just my opinions, but I'm basing this, you know, off of the way music business work, especially when you're signing things in this industry, like, Really got to be careful, man. It's, it's, too, it's too much information out right now for independent artists to be following following down these roads. But you have some artists who, who like, you know, they got that it's not going to happen to me type, you know, attitude. And yeah, it's definitely going to happen to you when you don't have um, you don't have no leverage. Megan had no leverage. The only thing she had was she was super talented. She was doing ciphers and, you know, she was doing whatever she could to get her talent in front of people. And she did get it in front of somebody. You know, T. Ferris um, brought her a business proper proposition. You know, her mother, like her mother's, you know, was a was a was an artist. So, you know, I'm assuming her mother was, you know, kind of educated in the ways of the industry. So, 18 years old, uneducated, super talented, and now like we see her all over the television screen. We see her on some of the biggest platforms in the world. And, you know, when you just break down the pot, you know, 60, 40, then she, out of that 40% she got left, she got a management deal with Rock Nation. So there go another 20, 30%, who knows? You know, I don't know what her, the percentage Rock Nation getting off of her, but she has a management deal with her. So of course y'all see her on all these platforms. Y'all see her everywhere. They, of course, they, they want to eat. Everybody want to eat. Just don't put yourself in a position where everybody eating and you not eating. But like I said, man, y'all leave comments here. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this video. These are just my opinions. When I'm talking about music business, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm speaking facts, music business facts. But these are my opinions. Everybody's opinion deserves to be respected. Y'all leave me comments, man, and let me know what y'all think about this video.